Hey, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. And in this video, I'm going to be going through question number 12. Um, probably the first couple of parts and then the other parts in another video of question um, number 12. Sorry, from June 2019, the C4, C34 paper, sorry, Core Mathematics C34, International A-Level Edexcel paper. This is a question about vectors. And um, in this question, we're told that relative to a fixed origin O, the point A has position vector 2i minus 3j minus 2k. And the point B has position vector 3i plus 2j plus 5k. And the point C has position vector 2i plus 4j minus 3k. The line L passes through the points A and B. Find the vector A to B. Okay, now, relative to a fixed origin O, the position vector. Now, the word position vector means from O to that point anyway. So, the point A has position vector A, um, such and such. It means the vector from O to A is that. Okay, so, they didn't even have to mention relative to fixed origin O. If they mentioned the position vector of A is whatever, that means the vector from O to A. So, we've got three vectors here. We're told about three different vectors here. The vector from O to A and the vector from O to B, and the vector from O to C. So I'm going to write them down in slightly different form because I prefer to use column vectors when I'm doing my calculations. I find it makes life a bit easier. So I'll write this as 2 and negative 3 and negative 2. 2i minus 3i, 2i minus 3j minus 2k. Okay, the first row is for i's, second for j's, and third for k's. It's a three-dimensional vector. And then from O to B, we're going to have 3i, so 3, 2, and 5. You don't have to write the i, j's, and k's. The position tells you which is i, j, and k. And then O to C, we have 2 and 4 and negative 3. Okay, just make sure we haven't made a silly mistake of writing them down. Okay, so now we have the, th the three vectors, and we've got to find the vector from A to B. Okay, so we know the vectors from O to A and O to B, and we've got to find the vector from A to B. So now... Seeing as these are three dimensional, we can't really even draw them very accurately. I'm just going to make a little diagram here. This will make a bit more space. I might use a diagram in other parts of the question, maybe. So I'll just make it a bit neat. Say this is O. And say this is A. And say this is B. Okay, so that's A and B. So I'm going to draw a line going through A and B. That's the vector. That's the line L. Okay, it's going through the points A and B. Okay, it's, let's call that A, and let's call that B. And this is the line L. Okay, so we know the vector from O to A is this vector, and O to B is this vector. Okay, and we know what those vectors are. Okay, so we know this vector, O to A, and O to B. They're, they're given to us. Okay, there's O to A over here, and there's O to B over there. All right, so we have got to find the vector from A to B. So if we want to go from A to B, we've got to go from A to O and then from O to B. So the vector from A to B, do it over out here actually. The vector from A to B will be like going from A to O, which is like negative O to A, opposite direction of O to A, plus the vector from O to B. Okay, which you can write as O to B minus O to A. You can write it like that. Okay, so that's generally how you're going to find a vector from... If you want to go, if you know the vector from O to A and O to B, A to B will, it will be O B minus O A for that reason, because you've got to go first um, opposite direction, going from A to O and then from O to B. So this is going to be this vector minus that vector. Okay, so we're going to have basically, that's going to be 2 and minus 3 and minus 2 take away o to a oh sorry wrong way around o to b minus o to a o to b is 3 2 and 5 3 2 and 5 and o to a is 2 minus 3 and minus 2 so that gives us our vector 3 minus 2 is 1 2 minus minus 3 is 5, and 5 minus minus 2 is 7. So the vector from A to B in the format that they ask us to put it in 
you can say the vector from A to B. It's better to write it in the same format like I, J, and K notation. That's going to be 1I plus 5J plus 7K. That's the vector from A to B. Okay, that's your answer there. That's answer for part A. Okay, now part B says find a vector equation for the line L. Find a vector equation for the line L. So now, this is the line L. Now, a vector equation is basically it's very simple. Okay, you have the vector equation is equal to, basically you've got the position vector of any point in the line plus some scalar times the direction of the line. So this, this vector here, which is with scalar, represents the, um, the, the direction of the line and this represents any point on the line. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to find any point on the line. So we have two points on the line. We have A and B. The position vector of any point on the line. So we know we know the position vector of A and we know the position vector of B. The position vector of A is this and the position vector of B is that. So we could choose any one of those as our position vector of any point on the line. And then we need the direction of the line. Well, we just found the direction of the line. A to B is a vector represent a direction on the line. You could be going any direction. I could be going this way. I could be going that way. As long as it's parallel to the line. It could be going one way or the other way. So I have all the information I need just to write it down. So for the line L, the position vector um, or the vector equation of the line is given by R equals a position on the line, which is, um, I'll choose, let me choose A. This is 2 minus 3 and minus 2 plus some scalar, some constant, I'm going to call it lambda, times, it's a scalar, it's actually, it's like some, some number multiplied by the direction of the line, which is 1, 5, and 7. That is a vector equation of the line. Okay, just position vector of a point on the line plus lambda or some, some, some you know, scalar times the constant uh, time times the direction of the line sorry so that we can say that the letter, we can also write this in the form of 2i minus 3j minus 2k plus lambda times i plus 5j plus 7k and there we have the equation the vector equation for the line l okay now for part c it says show that the size of the angle CAB is 62.8 degrees to one decimal place. Okay, so now what we need to do is um, we need to look at the diagram that we drew up here. I have it prepared, I think, somewhere. Yep, there we are. So we need to find the size of the angle CAB. So there's a third point C, which they told us the position vector of that point. So I'll take this, put it down here so we can see it. Okay, whoops. Let's move it across here. So there's a vector O to C. All right, so now um, let's say that C, the angle A, C, A, B, 62.8. Let's just say the angle C, the, the point C is over here somewhere. Okay, so it makes this angle here, C, A, B. So we got to show what this angle is. So I need to know what the angle, I need to know what the vector from A to C is. If I know what the vector A to C is, I already know what the vector A to B is, I can then find um, the angle between them because of our formula that we should know, which is that the cosine of the angle between two vectors when they are placed tail to tail is the dot product of those two vectors, which is called A dot B, over the magnitude of those two vectors. Um, so if I know the vector, if, if I know that um, I've got the direction of AB and the direction of AC. I can find the angle between them. And I know the direction of AB is this vector here, 157. Okay, so I know what A to B is. Okay, so I'll write down over here somewhere. A to B is 157. So I know the vector A to B is 157. So we could call that, say, the vector A in, in, this, in our vectors here. And I need to find now the vector from A to C. If I know the vector A to C, I can then find, call that the vector B, and I can use it in this formula. So let's find what A to C is. Now, I know that the vector from A to C can be found in a very similar way to the way I found the vector from A to B. 
Okay, I know that this vector here, a to c, is going to be minus OA plus OC. So I can say the vector from A to C is going to be basically OC minus OA. Same logic as we did earlier when we found A to B. So O to C is 2, 4, minus 3. And take away OA. Now we know OA, that that was actually the position vector that I chose. The position of A, 2, negative 3, 2, minus 3, minus 2. So 2 minus 3 and minus 2. Now be very careful when you are adding and subtracting vectors because if you make a slight mistake it messes up your whole question. So especially with these signs you've got 2 minus 2 which is 0, you've got 4 minus minus 3 which is 4 plus 3 which is 7 and you've got negative 3 plus 2 which is negative 1 minus 1. Okay minus 3 plus 2 minus 1. Okay so that's a vector from A to C. 0, 7, minus 1. So now I can say the cosine of the angle between the two vectors is the dot product of these two, which I can write as 1, 5, 7, dot, 0, 7, 1, divided by the magnitudes, uh, product of the magnitudes. So the magnitude of A to B, that's going to be 1 plus 25, which is 26, 26 plus 49, let me just write 1 plus 25 plus 49. That's 50, that's 75. And then you're going to have the square root of, well, 0, 0, 7 squared, 49 plus 1, that's going to be 50. Okay, so we can say, therefore, that the cosine of theta is equal to, now the dot product is you multiply the i components, then you find the product of the j components and the product of the k components, then you add those together. So 1, one times 0, 0, so you're going to have 35 plus 7, which is 42. Okay, so 1 times 0 plus 5 times 7 plus 7 times 1. That's going to give you 35 plus 7, 42, divided by, and this is going to give you the square root of, that's going to be, ah, that's a minus 1. See, that's where you have to be careful. It's not 42. Sorry about that. That's a minus 1. I didn't write it down. Be very careful about that. Sorry. So it's 1 times 0 plus 5 times 7, which is 35. 35 plus minus 7. So you're going to have, 0 plus 35 minus 7 over, and you're going to have root of 75 times the root of 50. Okay, so we're almost there now. Just make a bit of space down here. So we can say, therefore, that the cosine of theta is equal to, that's 28, divided by root 75 times root 50. I'll leave it like that. Therefore, theta is inverse cosine of all of that. So I'm going to take my calculator and put all of that in there. Okay, so I have to make sure that my calculator is in written degree mode, and it is. In case it's not, just shift menu, imp angle input, and then change it to degree mode, in case it's not. So now you're going to have um, inverse cosine of 28 divided by root 75 times root 50 and I hope that that comes out to the required angle oops I need to put that in the right format close the bracket there okay so we can see that we have to make sure that 62.8 degrees so let's see if it comes out 62.8 degrees and yes it does so 62.790 so 62.790 62.790 dot 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 continues so therefore, to one decimal place is 62.8 degrees. Okay, so we have got the answer there for the angle theta between the angle C, A, B. Okay, now, um, if we had, by mistake or for some reason, found the vector from C to A instead of A to C, okay, we would have got basically, you know, the vector going in this direction. What we would have found is we would have found the, the, the angle on this side okay the acute angle uh, sorry the obtuse angle between a to c because it's always tail to tail okay so if i had found the vector from c to a then i would have found basically the angle between them over here because this this would have continued this i would have found this angle over here basically okay and that would have been um 180 minus what we found so 
That's the reason why when I did it, I decided to make sure that I'm finding A to C because I, I can see that A is where the angle is. A is where the angle is, right? So I did um, C to A. I mean, uh, A is where the angle is. So if I find the vector A to C and the vector A to B, they're tail to tail. And when you do the this dot product and this, when you find the angle between the two vectors in this using this formula, it always gives you the angle tail to tail angle. So that's why I found A to C and A to B and found their dot product. So there we have the answer for part C. Okay, now for part D. It says, hence find the area of the triangle CAB, giving your answers to three significant figures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put D on a separate video. So after this, you'll see... Um, a separate video for D. I'm going to put D in the next video. So I'll, put, I'll actually put a link to that video. Um, you can be able to just click it. It will show up here. The video will show up. You click it, it'll take you to the next video. Okay, I'll take you to the next part. So I'll do that because this video is going to get a bit too long. So um, I'll see you again in the next video.